Hi guys, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop and since the last video I put the boot on the differential and I put one boot on the chain case on the clutch side and we're gonna slide this bad boy together and hopefully get it done uh, we don't have a whole lot more to do. Uh, we've slide this uh, drivetrain in there. We've got to hook up the brake cable, the clutch cable, and see if they need adjusting. And uh, well, let me move you down there because I got an answer hopefully for a guy that's having problems with his machine. He says, I push the clutch in, I start the machine, and when I let the clutch out, the engine stalls. Well, if you're watching, I'm going to show you why and how to fix it. So if you have that problem, this is what you got. This is your yoke. When you push your clutch in, this comes up. And it pulls the chain case away from the drive disc. And if you push it up hard enough, it applies the brake. Well, right here, this little gray thing is a safety switch. And when you're letting out your clutch, it opens this switch up. And I believe that is the problem what keeps killing your engine. You have a defective switch. Why it's doing that, I don't know. But this isn't just an on off switch. It has four wires coming out of it. So that's telling me <clears throat> that this switch is not only a normally open, but it's also a normally closed. So it's telling the machine two different things. The clutch is applied, the clutch is open. So it's the open side of your switch that is defective. But you can test that with a meter. Pop the plug out, put your probes in the hole, and activate the switch with your finger. And if you watch your meter, you'll be able to tell what's wrong with that switch. Now, let's stuff the differential in there. We'll get the chain case down here. We got our thrust washer that goes in the end of the hexagon shaft. We got to have that down here because we got to put it on just before we stick the axle through this other bushing. Now we'll get this down here. Now when I took this thing apart, I took that fender off first. Boy, I just really got into that. You have to excuse me, I'm chewing on uh, cough drops to try to keep from coughing. Now when I took this apart, I took that fender off first and took off the chain case. And when the chain case is on the hex shaft, it's hard to get it out without removing your yoke. But if you put this side on last, or you take this side off first, you don't have to mess with your yoke. You just stick the shaft in there. And you can stick it in that hole. Now one thing I want to say, if you have trouble with this thing shifting, check out this little tail piece on your chain case. It has a tube on it. Make sure that tube is in good shape and it's not froze and have a big war spot in it. That's best if it rotates. You don't really want to oil or grease that because that's just going to attract all the dirt and make it stick in there. So we're going to set this in here. This is probably going to be a handful to get together. 
screw that nut on. And usually I don't hook this up first, but we'll try it this time and see how it works. Okay. Now I have the boot on this side already with the clamp. And we're going to try to slide this through here. Probably going to be a three person job. Now before you get that all the way through, we're going to put on I'm going to grab two of these shims because I'm pretty sure I'm going to need them. First we want to slide on that uh, thrust washer with the hexagon teeth sticking out. Just stick that on, put two shims on, and insert the axle in that bushing. Now as the hex shaft appears, Maybe if we shift this in a higher gear and pull this over some more, there's our hex shaft. We want to make sure that snaps in the way it's supposed to be. And slide it in place. Yeah, it looks like we're going to need a whole lot more than two. Now what we want to do is bolt this thing together. I'm get some of these started. Now what I want to mention is one of these bolts are, or I should say, is an eighth of an inch longer than the other ones. That goes up here in this top corner. Maybe I could slide this over here. That's a little better. Whoa. Now this bolt goes into this bar. It's threaded in. The next bolt is a nut and a bolt. There's no threads. And we can screw some of these in here. We we'll get them to line up. Well, that just didn't want to line up for some reason. back up here now. Now that longer screw in this nut and bolt holds on this bracket for the um, hangs a mower deck. And that goes on there like that. The nut and bolt goes through. And this longer bolt goes back here. Now we got them tightened up. Now we're on this side, and I know what you're gonna say. Jim, Jim, you forgot to put the tie rod in. That's what helps support the two fenders. No, I didn't forget. I'll do that once I get the side play out of the axle. 
Now to get rid of the side play, I've had a lot of questions on where do you do that. And I keep telling them it's coming up on the next video. It's right here. Right between that thrust washer that snaps into your hex shaft and the end of your bushing. I have two of them in there right now. And by the way it looks, you can just slide them in to check. I'm going to need at least one more. Push it all the way that way and see how many you can get in there. Eh, I'd say probably at least one more. I don't know if I can get two in there or not. Two is looking awfully tight. It, well, I'm going to try one and put it back together. If it's still got slop in it, then we're going to cut one of these and snap it in. Show you how that works. So let me take this fender off and then we'll put the tie rod in. I'll put on my other shim and we'll put it back together. Okay, we just got the fender off. We're going to add one more shim. That makes three. Get that uh, thrust washer inside the hex shaft where it belongs and we'll put the fender back on. Put all the bolts back in. But I guess before I do that, I put the tire on in before I do forget about it this time. Now we can put them bolts in. Remember to try to get them all started before you tighten any up. It always helps. Now on this side of the machine, maybe I'll turn this a little. These are really hard to start. I guess they just like being difficult. Well, this one really wants to be difficult. to hold up this clamp for the wire that goes back to the engine. So we'll stick that through the clamp and put it into the frame. Maybe. There we go. Now this next one goes through the clamp and the bracket for the mower deck and into the frame. This one is a bolt and a nut. 
and holds it all together. get this fender tightened up so I can check my slop or side play whatever you want to call it and by the looks of this I could use one more shim So I'll show you how to cut these. The ones you buy has a slot cut out of them. You can just cut it so it will open up. You don't really have to cut a slot out of it and just snap it around the axle. Just like that. Now I'm down to less than a 30 second. That's what I want. Now I get a nut driver to open this clamp up because I did forget to put that on. But that's not the end of the world. I could think of worse things to forget to put on at this point. Now to get these boots on, these boots are the same size. There are some machines that has a long neck on one boot. That boot goes on this side, not this side. As you can see when you're in fifth gear, this is compressed as tight as it can get. So now we want to shift this thing down so we can get this boot stretched over here. These are always fun to try to get on. Let me tell you. With that grease fitting in the way, it's really hard to tighten these up. You almost need a, well to get that good and tight, I will probably will, you almost need a universal joint. To go around this corner to get onto that. The other one, you want to shift it back over here so you can pull that one over and get it where it belongs and tighten that one up. Put our nuts on our tie rod. These are hard to tighten up because this tie rod has no place to hang on to to put a wrench on it outside of a uh, pair of pliers and I hate to use that so we're gonna put a, a socket on each side and tighten her up let me turn this a little <laughs> a 
Once you get one side tightened up, then you can go over and tighten the other side. And that's it. The next video, well, let me get this up. That's it. The next video will be hooking up the cables and adjusting them. Then we'll put the mower deck on, uh, the drive belt for the deck, and make sure that's still in adjustment. And I'll show you how to adjust it. Hopefully I won't have to do that on this one because I didn't move the adjustment clamp when I took it apart. But I guess for tonight, that's it. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the box below and I'll try to answer them just as soon as I can get to them. I have been uh, really behind on some of my emails because I just haven't been feeling all that good. Uh, I don't type. I talk to my phone and it types for me and with my voice the way it's been it's been really typing some strange things <laughs> so i have to say if you've got an email answer and it just <laughs> doesn't make sense let me know because i try to proofread these before i hit send but there was a couple of them I pushed the button to erase some words and my fat little finger hit the wrong one and it sent it. <laughs> so <laughs> I would imagine some of them are pretty humorous. <laughs> so uh, until next time, work safe, have fun, and that's all it's, that's all it's about. It's just have some fun. We'll talk to you soon.